last class we have finished uh, the cantilever seat pile wall means uh, find it out the depth of the penetration of cantilever seat pile wall in granular soil. The solution has been uh, calculated how to find it out this uh, depth of amendment of cantilever seat pile wall. Now, <coughs> there is one another one method is called approximate method. Remember these whatever we are discussing these are for uh, cohesionless soil or granular soil. In approximate method if this is the seat pile wall and this is your dredge line and this distance is d let us say this part is your retaining of soil Now, this height is let us say h height in this approximate solution the pressure distribution in the back if you look at this this is my wall this is the wall and let us say a this is small d this is your c. So, that means this is your dredge line up to this dredge line up to this dredge line below this dredge line there is a soil filling up the assumption for this approximate method is below the dredge line that means back of the wall this part is your soil retain soil retain that means if this is the front face of the wall and this is your back face of the wall this has been assumed that this back face will be acted upon by passive air pressure and front face will be acted upon by active air pressure so this is not a case in the exact solution but in case of approximate solution for a quick calculation this has been made take it below the dredge line and back face acted upon by passive bar pressure and front face acted upon by active bar pressure. <coughs> now if you take moment at point C taking moment at point C moment at point C is equal to 0 then you can find it out half gamma k p d square into d by 3 is equal to half k a gamma h plus d whole square into h plus d by 3. Now, this is a completely this is a cubic equation you can say that this is cubic equation. Now, how to find it out this then you can start with the, this procedure is that first sketch the given condition sketch the wall and other conditions then find k a and k p that means active and passive earth pressures also compute compute distance a resultant r a compute distance a resultant r a and its location y bar if I say total forces is coming resultant is somewhere else here r a how far it is distance from this y bar of distance a means you can find it out what is the y bar. 
then you can find it out how much is your y bar. Then find the uh, in this case put the value of y instead of d you can put the value of y and find it out find it out by trial error and error find it out the value of what is the value of d by approximate value you can put it what is the value of d. Approximate method as I said it has been assumed one side of this below the dredge line this has been assumed acted by passive earth pressure that means back of the wall. If this is my wall this is the wall so this is a back of the wall it is acted upon by passive pressure. And front of the wall acted upon by active because it retained in the soil mass. So, taking movement at point c m is equal to c is equal to 0. So, we are getting a cubic equation how to solve it the procedure first you draw this case the wall and other conditions that means soil parameter right c phi what are the parameter what is the height of the <coughs> wall above the dredge line. Then once you get it find the k and k p depending upon the phi value you can find it out earth pressure k and k p active as well as passive. Then find it out from the k gamma d k gamma h plus d where is your resultant earth pressure is acting and the distance of y bar. Then once you get y bar then put this uh, value uh, uh, trial and error you put this and you will find it out d. Once you get the d you find it out l is equal to h plus d that means total length of your wall will equal to h plus d. Now these are the two methods one is your one is your whatever we solved last class one is your actual uh, uh, method and other is your approximate method generally design engineer they use sometimes this approximate method for quick calculation to know what is the length of this wall or uh, they are supposed to provide. Now we will solve a typical problem. of this cantilever retaining wall in granular soil whatever solved whatever we derived last class. So, now we will solve a typical example problem. So, this now this is the given conditions one is example a wall is there. In this wall, this is your distance d is supposed to be find it out. Now, one side it retains soil. Now, water table is lying, water table symbol generally we provide in this way water table is lying below 10 feet this is your 10 feet and this distance is 20 feet and this is a purely cohesionless soil gamma is equal to 110 pcf pascal for cubic feet phi is equal to 30 degree and here gamma submerge is equal to yours 60 60 pcf and phi is equal to 30 degree. This is the condition find the length of embedment that means the d has to you have to find it out shown in figure either you can solve this by means of approximate method or whatever we derived it actual solution you can do it. Now, first step what is your first step? Step 1 find k a k p k a dash k p dash. Now, if you look at here delta is equal to steel sheet pile and sand value of delta friction between sheet pile wall and soil is given 17 degree. Now, if I take a retaining wall this kind of what is the formula to find it out k and k p if this is my wall it may be inclined
So, this is your beta, this is your rho and this is alpha and this is P A, this is your delta. Now, with this what is the formula for K A and K P? K A is equal to sin square alpha plus phi divided by sin square alpha sin alpha minus delta into 1 plus root over of sin phi plus delta sin phi minus beta divided by sin phi minus delta sin phi minus delta into sin alpha plus beta alpha plus beta and this whole square. Now, if you look at here in these conditions in this condition this is plane that means in this condition beta is equal to beta is equal to 0 beta is equal to 0 then what is about alpha this alpha if you look at this alpha this alpha is straight vertical that means this alpha is equal to 90 degree and what is about rho what is about rho? rho value is a failure envelope rho value we can we have not taken it here and what is value of delta delta is equal to 17 degree phi is equal to 30 degree phi is equal to 30 degree. Now, if you find it out with alpha beta if you terms are delta delta alpha beta beta. Now, k a is to be find it out which is equal to 0 0.299 as the soil value is same for both the sides. So, k a is equal to k a dash. Similarly, for k p similarly for k p if I say to find it out the k p now I can change with this equation what is the value of k p k p is equal to sin square alpha minus phi and this is your sin square alpha sin square alpha plus delta and 1 plus 1 this is not plus this is your minus root over sin phi plus delta sin phi plus beta now sin alpha plus delta sin alpha this is not phi it is earlier alpha plus delta now sin alpha plus beta this is the value of this is the derivation of k p then putting this value we can find it out k p is equal to k p is equal to 5.385 5.385 which is equal to nothing but k p dash. That means, first step you sketch and you find it out k a k p k a dash k p dash because these are all your earth pressure distrib earth pressure <coughs> values active earth pressure k a and k p k a dash as I said earlier if the soil conditions are same soil conditions are same that means, k a is equal to k a dash. Now, k dash is equal to k p dash minus k a dash which is equal to 5.086. Now, gamma dash k p dash minus k a dash which is equal to let us say c which is equal to 0 0.31. Now, if I draw the actual pressure distribution diagram how it looks as we have explained or derived yesterday this is my wall. Now, the there is a water table is somewhere else here. So, actual pressure distribution diagram will be this will go in this way then it will go somewhere else then it will go in this way. 
Now, you have to find it out the area, how to calculate this earth pressure, uh, earth pressure value, unless otherwise you do not find it out the area, how do you calculate? You know the K and K P. Now, we can divide into number of parts, number 1, then put it number 2, then put it number 3, like this and this is your distance say point A, at point O it rotated this is a distance say point A. Now, next step is your step 2, find A, R A and y bar, a is your distance, a is equal to distance below the dredge line where it rotated, it rotated some points that is your point of rotation and now that is your point of rotation and y bar r a is equal to your resultant pressure acted, somewhere else here resultant pressure acted at a distance from here this is your how much it is, it is your y bar. Now, calculate a y bar, if you go back to previous whatever we have derived P A prime is equal to K A gamma H 1 plus K A prime gamma submerged H 2. Now, this I calculate 0 0.110 into 10 plus 0 0.06 into 10 into 0.299 which is equal to 0.51 KSF. Now, if you go back to last class derivations, I have derived the how to get your point A value, A is nothing but is your P A prime divided by gamma submerged K P dash minus k dash which is equal to your 0 0.51 by 0 0.31 which is equal to 1.65 feet. Now, we got this is the value, this is the value P A dash, this is how much it is coming 0 0.51, the distance we got it your 1.65, 1.65 this is your next step. Now, find it out what is the value of resultant R A, R A is equal to 0 0.33 into 10 by 2 plus 0 0.33 plus 0 0.51 into 10 by 2 plus 0 0.51 10 by 2 into 1.65 which is equal to your 6.28 kips. So, R A generally R A act at a distance, distance y bar from point of rotation, this is the point of rotation R A resultant force act at a distance y bar from the point of rotation. Now, we will calculate your point of rotation means y bar, if I say R A into y bar is equal to 1.65 into 14.98 plus 0 0.33 into 10, 6.65 plus half into 0 0.51 minus 0 0.33 into 10 into 4.98 plus 0 0.42 into 1.65 by 3, which is equal to y bar is equal to y bar is equal to 8.2 feet. Now, we get these resultant forces R A by taking this triangle, by taking the area, area into K A or K P, you can find it out resultant force means forces at triangle 1 means portion 1, 2, 3, then sum it, then you can find it out what is your resultant forces. This resultant forces at what distance it act from the point of rotation, that also we calculated y bar is equal to from point of rotation this to this is your, is your, your 8.2 feet. 
Now, point of rotation also we get it 1.65 feet. Now, next step is your find the value of find the value of D. Now, if I say this is my P P dash, what is the value of P P 1 dash is equal to gamma H 1 K P plus gamma submerged H 2 K P plus gamma submerged A into K from there it comes out to be 9.66 this and gamma submerged k is equal to 0 0.31. Now, P P 1 dash by gamma submerged k which is equal to 31.16. Now, 8 R A by gamma prime k which is equal to 162.16. 0 6. Now, 6 R A by gamma submerged k whole square which is equal to 392.09. Now, if you look at this what is the formula generally find it out we have derived the formula to get it this is your formula. Now, also we can get it 6 R A y bar P P dash plus 4 R A whole square by your gamma submerged K whole square. This is your 327.00. Now, if I put the equation y fourth plus y q this is the terminology I have calculated from here. Then 31.2 minus 162 y square minus 5781 y is equal to 32700. This has to be solved by means of trial and error means write y then y fourth, then 31.2 y q, then 162.2 y square, then minus 5.5.781 5 y and this should be your 32, 32 700. If I put the value of because this is a trial and error you can consider value start with a value initial value by assumed value. See how far it is from your it should be equal because this is a fourth order equation it should be equal. How far it is varying from this? Let us start with the value of 14. Now, with this value of 14 you can calculate y fourth y q this you can calculate approximately it is coming 11,342. 11, 11342. Now, with this 11342, if I take another value of 15, y is equal to 15, then you calculate all other parameters, all other parameters as it is given. So, this value is coming approximately 32760. How this has been calculated? This has been calculated based on your approximate solutions that means, you have to start with your particularly y any value of assumed value of y once you have taken is 14 then you can say that it is less than this then you increase to 15 you see that how much it is coming it is slightly larger than this. So, it will come between 14.98 or 14.96 this this range it will come. Now, once you will get the value let us say y is equal to 15 let us say y is equal to 15 feet. Now, you can get it d is equal to 15 plus 
1.65 which is equal to 16.65 feet. Now, as I said this is the value of d we are getting 16.65 feet from the example. You have to use the factor of safety that means increase between 20 percent to 40 percent value let us say 30 percent increase let us say 30 percent increase that means your d prime is equal to 21.6 feet d 1 means as I said earlier the d value to be whatever you get the d value with that d value you increase a factor of safety 20 to 40 percent we have taken 30 percent either you take factor of safety here or you take factor of safety in the value of k a or k p it is your 1.5 times you can take k a and k p 1.5 times. So, you are getting d prime is equal to 21.6 feet that means with this value it is just stable it is just stable with value increases from 21.6 feet it is safe embedment depth to be safe or it will be more than more than safe you can see say, say that. So, as I said this completely it has been calculated by means of trial and error method and this is a generally a fourth order equation first step you have to find it out draw the diagram find it out your water table where water table is lying. Once you get your water table find it out value of k and k p the way I calculated once you get the k and k p draw the pressure distribution diagram draw the pressure distribution diagram as I draw it earlier pressure distribution diagram and find it out point a a is your point of rotation this is point a below this point of rotation then find it out resultant force r a and find it out the distance resultant force from point of rotation once you get r a a and y bar then find it out other terms in this y fourth y q y square these are the terms we calculated these are the terms we calculated from this based on this equation these are the terms has been calculated. Now, once you put this value and find it out what is the this is the given value this h this is the value of h that means this is the external load applied this load is given earlier. So, once this is given the, this fourth order equation you get it. Now, the question is how much depth I can penetrate this uh, complete sheet pile wall. So, once you put it the value by trial and error you can find it out what is your depth this is your depth is 16.65 feet then from there you put your factor of safety then this is your depth if you go up to 21.6 feet then this will be stable this will be stable and more safe and if you provide d is equal to 15 feet this is just about to take if anything load coming beyond this it will it will fail immediately. So, how this this is one of the example problem how we have solved next class I will try to solve one more problem.